Hello and welcome to this video on valuation using price multiples. Valuing a company using a price multiples approach is a very popular way of valuing a company because it's quite a simple and easy to apply methodology. There's three steps that you can follow to apply a price multiples method to value a company. The first step is to select a base measure ratio. So for example, something like a price to earnings ratio, a price to sales ratio, or a price to book, also called a market to book ratio, may be selected as a base measure. You'll then calculate this ratio for comparable firms to the firm you wish to value, and then you'll apply that comparable firm multiple to the firm you wish to value. So there's three steps. You're gonna select a ratio such as a price to earnings ratio. You're gonna go find a company that's similar to the company you wanna value. You're gonna calculate the price to earnings ratio for that other company, and you'll say, Okay, because these two companies are similar, I'm going to use the price earnings ratio of my competitor firm and apply it to the firm I'm valuing to come up with an estimate of the value of that firm. So here's an example from the Penman textbook. Uh, so this is a bit of an old one. We've got three companies that are in the computer industry, Hewlett Packard, Lenovo, and Dell. And we've got a little bit of financial information for each of these companies. We've got the sales, earnings, book value, market value for each of the companies. That's then used to calculate three different ratios, a price to sales ratio, a price to earnings ratio, and a price to book ratio. So if you've not come across these ratios before, a price to sales ratio would take the market value of the company, that is the number of shares times the share price, that gets the market capitalization or the total market value of the company, we would call that the price. So it'd be the P in the ratio. And then you divide it through by the sales revenue. So Hewlett Packard have 115,700 uh, in market value and it's in millions. So at the time it would have been 115 billion in market value. And you divide through by their 84 billion in sales revenue to get a price to sales of 1.37. The price to earnings ratio, we use the market value divided through by the firm's earnings or their net profit. Okay, their PE ratio is 15.9. Their market value is 15.9 times higher than their current year net profit. And finally, the price to book ratio is also called the market to book ratio. You take the market value of equity and divide through by the book value of equity. The book value of equity is the equity on your balance sheet. Okay, so it's comparing what the investors value the company at compared to what the balance sheet values the company, the equity on the balance sheet. So we've got these three different ratios for Hewlett Packard, Lenovo, and Dell. And we wanna try and value Dell because Dell's a computer manufacturing company and Hewlett Packard and Lenovo sell similar products. So they're all in the same industry competing against each other. We've got these ratios calculated for Hewlett Packard and Lenovo. Why don't we take an average of the industry and apply it to Dell to try and value Dell's company? Okay, so we know Dell's sales, earnings and book value from their financial statements, but we're gonna try and calculate the market value based on other companies in the industry. So we can say, for the price to sales ratio, Hewlett Packard have 1.37 and Lenovo have 0.44. So that means the price to sales average would be 0.91. So if we add up these two numbers and divide by two to get the average, it would be 0.91. If we then wish to apply it to Dell, we'd say Dell's sales was 61.133. We would multiply it by the average price to sales ratio for the industry of 0.91, and that would value Dell at $55.631 billion. We can then do the same for the average price to earnings ratio and the average price to book ratio, and we'll see we get three very different valuations here. So immediately, our first example of price multiples, we've calculated the value of Dell using three different multiples, price to sales, price to earnings, and price to book, and we've got three very different answers to the expected valuation of Dell. The highest one values Dell at 81 billion, and the lowest valuation is 16 billion. Now, if you're an investor, there's a big difference between paying $80 billion for a company and $16 billion for a company. So we've already seen that this price multiples method is very quick. Within two minutes, I was able to value Dell. However, it's also very inaccurate. Just changing the multiple or the ratio that I'm using gives me valuation differences of $60 billion, which is not very useful for anyone. Okay, so we've got the price multiples meth method here. We've just applied an example. It illustrates some disadvantages. 
First of all, finding comparable firms can be quite difficult on its own. So just because Dell, Lenovo, and Hewlett Packard all make and sell similar products doesn't mean they're similar firms. Some of those firms may also have different strategies. They may be selling different products in a different mix. They may be operating in different geographic segments. So yes, they all sell computers, but it doesn't mean they're identical firms that we can apply the same ratios to. We attempted to use an industry average, but we could see even the difference between the ratios of Hewlett Packard and Lenovo were very different. So the difference between a price earnings of 15 and 39 is huge. So averaging out these two numbers that are very different doesn't necessarily give us anything better. So choosing comparable firms or industry averages is difficult because no firm is exactly the same as another firm that we want to compare it to. Firms with poor performance, for example, if your net profit is very low this year, will bias your price multiples. Okay, so if there's earnings management or earnings shocks in a particular year, when you're calculating your price multiples, it's going to lead to more inaccuracies in the valuation that you come up with. And we've learned in our reformatting, a business's operations compared to its financing activities are very different in creating value. Two firms that are selling similar products may have very different financing structures in place. One might be highly leveraged, the other might have no debt. So applying a price multiple between these two firms if they are financed in very different ways also doesn't make much sense because the equity holders would get very different returns based on the leverage used by a company. So disadvantages of price multiples. We've seen in this first example, we can get very different valuations depending on which ratio we use. We know that choosing a comparable firm is hard. We know that the ratios will change significantly year to year if we have poor performance or outstanding performance in a year. We know the financing activities of the firm aren't taken into account. There's a lot of disadvantages to price multiple. Let's have another look at a demonstration question here. So Coles, an Australian supermarket company, they operate in the food and staples retailing industry and two of the listed competitors are Metcash and Woolworths. Coles were previously owned by West Farmers, the company that owned Bunnings, and in the last few years they were listed as a separate company. So when Coles were first getting listed, price multiples may have been a useful way of trying to figure out roughly what Coles' valuation would be. We know Woolworths details and we know Metcash details because they've been listed on the stock exchange for many years, but Coles was getting introduced as a new standalone company. So maybe we'd want to look at price multiples in this case. So we can look at Coles' net profit and I know how many shares Coles have and I've got the same information for Woolworths and also their market value of equity. So I'm going to try and value Coles using the average industry price to equity ratio, sorry, price to earnings ratio of Woolworths and Metcash. Okay, so they're the three big players in the supermarket industry in Australia. So I'm going to use the average of Woolworths and Metcash to get an industry average, and I'm going to apply it to Coles. So in this table here, I've got the Woolworths data and the Metcash data. I've calculated their price to earnings ratio. So the price here refers to the price of the whole company. So that would be the market value of equity. So I've taken the market value of equity and divided by their earnings, which would be the net profit. And for Woolworths, they've got a PE ratio of about 15.89. And for Metcash, when I divide the market value of equity by their net profit, I get a PE ratio of about 13.94. So I can calculate the average for the industry and it comes out to be 14.92. So I can now apply that to Coles. I can say, here's Coles net profit that I can read from their income statement. If I multiply their net profit by 14.92, it would estimate their market value of equity to be 21,399. This number here, I have estimated based on the average price to earnings ratio of the industry. I then know how many shares they have, so I've divided the market value of equity by the number of shares to come up with a price per share estimate. So this number and this number I have estimated based on the average price to earnings ratio. You could step through this using other ratios. In this slide, I've given you only the net profit and market value, but you could easily go and look at the balance sheet and see the value of equity on the balance sheet and do a market to book ratio or a price to book ratio, whichever one you want to call it. And you'd come up with different valuation estimates for Coles depending on which ratio you use. So in conclusion, price multiples are the most commonly used valuation metric. And the reason they're the most commonly used is because it's so simple and easy. You don't have to have studied an accounting degree to do those calculations that we've just done. 
They're often used as a very quick rule of thumb to get rough valuations. I know that if I'm valuing a company on the Australian Stock Exchange, a rough average price to earnings ratio at the moment might be about 20. So if I know a company's earnings and I multiply it by 20, I'm getting a rough estimate of their valuation. Very quick and dirty way of doing it. We know there's lots of inaccuracies with it, but it might start us thinking very quickly about what this company may be valued. Okay, so we need to realize they're commonly used. You'll see these ratios used all the time online when you're doing research about your company, but we need to be aware they're very inaccurate. It didn't require any forecasting from us. It didn't require us to calculate a cost of capital. We didn't do our reformatting and splitting operating from financing activities. We didn't even have to understand the business. So all those previous steps in valuing the company and understanding the business, understanding the accounting and forecasting were skipped over. So that's going to automatically raise some red flags here that it's too good to be true that this is going to be highly accurate. Advantages, quick and easy, good starting point for evaluation. Disadvantages, we're not doing any of the hard work, so we're not going to get any of the accuracy in the long run. Thank you.